Hey YouTube, welcome back. Today it's uh, the 11th, I guess, uh, uh, section of our series of system design fundamentals. I guess we have only one more video and it will be that's it. Um, uh, basically, we had, um, let's let just, if, if, if you are quite new, basically, this is your first video. I just suggest that you go to play or create a playlist for, for the system design fundamentals. So basically, I suggest that if you could see the the other videos so you understand what we are building i guess that would be uh that would be way more better uh otherwise if you are if you saw this video if you saw the previous video but you're not memorizing what we have done i'll just make a, a quick uh walk through so we understand what we have what we are building right now so and after that we will talk about what what it will be the next thing particularly uh, today's video we'll talk about the logging uh, metrics and um, automation and um, and uh, 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 monitor, uh, uh, monitoring basically so let's just start what we have here we have a client and the client is uh, on x is the the load balancer the client use um, uh, a geo dns service the it will send the the geo uh, domain name of the specific uh, uh, application that it wants like for example facebook.com something like that the DNS uh, returns the IP address of the nearest uh, uh, of the nearest uh, geo uh, load balancer uh, to the client. The client send the, uh, returns the IP address of it. The client connect with the IP address of the load balancer and uh, sends an HTTP request and uh, to the load balancer. And the load balancer is uh, duty. The main duty of the load balancer is to uh, basically manage uh, the the, the um, uh, all of the um, like manage the all the upcoming requests across uh, uh, regions and uh, and the web tier basically make sure that each web server gets uh, uh, requests and there is no web server has uh, has uh, has uh, has overload or, or or there is a server that has no requests at all so basically it helps us to make sure that uh, um, uh, it's uh, all of the servers are working and if of one of one of one of our web server went down. Uh, the load balancer will, will, will redirect the, the, the actual request to another web server so we make sure that our application is scalable and it's reliable and it's available all the time and um, and our web tier connected with the database basically this database and we have database we're using the master sleeve um, uh, architecture basically the master is uh, supporting the write operation the sleeve supporting the read operation uh, the master uh, 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 the master basically when the master has any write operation it's uh, edit the data and just uh, copy it to uh, the slaves if one of the slaves went down the other slave will, will take its tasks if the master went down one of the slaves will be promoted as a new uh, master and and by this one we we'll make sure the application is our data tier is, uh, is is reliable and can handle tons of different uh, uh, requests in the same time and uh, to make sure that we're working right with the, with the, with the latency we created a cache a cache it's a memory storage basically it's connected with the web tier so basically when we have when my web tier want to access data from the data tier it, it instead of just access database uh, directly it will just uh, search for the cache if it find the data it will uh, the, the cache will return it directly the cache is a memory storage so it's really fast way more faster than the data tier if the if the web tier doesn't uh, if the data, if the cache doesn't have the data the the web tier we, we will get the the data from the database and after that store it in the cache and uh, and you, when you have the cache you want to make sure that the policy that we have the expert policy is not too short and it's not too long so if it's too short that each time we will try to access the cache will will be quite empty if we are uh, if it's too long maybe our data will not be as reliable as possible and one of the other things that to improve the latency that we have create a cdn basically for all of our uh, static uh, uh, content for images css uh, javascript html things like that so basically if the if the client access a quite an image that live in a plop store like lives like uh, 100 kilometer away uh, something like that and instead of accessing each time when when the client access it once it's it's stored in the cdn the cdn basically uh, stores the, the, the this image in the closest to geo location Near the client that means it will be way more faster to the, the uh, for the client to access the actual data which which improve uh, which make the latency way more low and it will improve the user experience and we have here 
in the web tier we're using uh, something called a stateless architecture so basically we make sure that our web tier is quite stateless uh, because we, when we when 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 um, the client want to access specific uh, web server and um, like we, we store the data session and things like that it, in, 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 the, in the web server but we don't want that because if the client uh, uh, if this web server went down the client uh, the, all the client data are basically done uh, gone basically so uh, this this is not that scalable as possible and if, if, if the load balancer maybe made a problem and connected the the, the, the user to an, another web server uh, that doesn't have the data session that could be uh, uh, that, that lead to the same problem so basically we're using a shared uh, storage to basically the the web tier doesn't have any state at all so basically we serve a shared storage which we're using the null sql because it's easy to 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 um to uh to um it's a pretty easy to to scale to scale and uh, you can use no you can use sql redis whatever you want we choose no sql because it's a pretty easy to scale and we have here if we have the um, um, the the web team maybe we had uh, we were on of one of our uh, uh, users want to up, up the update image or do any things that will take time like asynchronous something like that so basically we have a web team and if the web team we should work with the workers but we work with the workers with something called the message queues and basically the message queues it's uh, it's uh, it's, uh, it's it just it takes uh, the the requests that are coming from the web team and send it to the workers and whenever the workers fi finish the the, the uh, the the the, wor the work that he, he uh, it's doing it will send it back to the message queue and the message queue send the response back to the web tier to make sure our application is quite reliable and scalable and handle tons of requests at the same time mm -hmm. and if our application getting bigger and bigger uh, we are using uh, data centers basically we are uh, taking uh, we're using two data centers here and the client can access the data centers through the uh, geo DNS. So basically, if I am in E1, e, EU1, I'll create like two, two, two um, data centers, maybe EU1 and EU2, maybe EU1 like in Germany, EU2 in France, whatever it will be. So uh, basically, um, this improves uh, that each 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 client will will access the the data center that it's nearest to uh, to uh, to its uh, its location. Uh, to his location and uh, and this will will improve the latency and also we have other thing is if uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, uh, systems went down uh, all of the requests will be uh, routed to the other 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 um, other other region and also the other region it saved all of the uh, eu1 uh, data into replicas to, to make sure that there is no lost data at all and um, and basically right now application it's uh, almost done we have our application it's, it's quite scalable it's quite, it's quite big we uh, we had uh, tons of millions of users and basically when we work with a small website that runs basically a few servers uh, um, basically um, logging and uh, uh, metrics and automation support are good practice but basically when we have this as, as as big project as we have right now they become necessary basically logging and logging monitoring error logs is important because it helps to identify errors and pro, uh, and the problems basically in the system and basically uh, 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 we can uh, monitor error logs uh, at, at, at per server level or um, or basically um, or at um, at uh, at uh, a geo uh, geo level also uh, basically um, logging and metrics and automation and monitoring uh, are uh, critical components of system design and operation each 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 uh, each of these areas plays a, a crucial role in ensuring uh, the system is uh, reliable and scalable and performant logging is uh, basically the logging is um, is the process of uh, recording events errors and uh, other relevant information uh, generated by system or application logs are typically stored in a, a, a central location and can be used for troubleshooting debugging and performance analysis uh, effective flowing is important for understanding the system behavior and identify issues that may uh, uh, affect performance or availability the metrics on the other hand the metrics are uh, uh, quantitative uh, measurements of the system performance and behavior metrics can provide uh, insight into uh, system usage resources uh, utilization and uh, other key indi uh, indicators of uh, system health metrics can uh, can be collected and uh, analyzed in real time can be uh, and also can be used in to uh, to identify trends spots 
uh, spot uh, anomalies and uh, optimize system performance. Um, uh, automation, uh, basically automation is uh, is the use of, 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 of software and tools, uh, automated uh, repetitive or uh, complex tasks such as like for example uh, deployment, uh, configuration, testing, automation can improve efficiency, reduce error and increase consistency uh, across the system. Uh, automation is uh, uh, particularly important in large scale and distributed systems like we have here where a manual process can be become uh, uh, cumbersome and uh, error prone uh, mon uh, monitoring uh, okay the monitoring involves uh, continuously uh, observing system behavior and performance and alerting uh, 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 st stakeholders when issue or, uh, or, or, or uh, when issue when issues are, are, are detected monitoring can involve uh, collecting and analyzing logs metrics and uh, other data can uh, involve uh, the, the use of the automated tools um, um, and um, the alerts basically. Uh, basically the effective monitoring is uh, essentially for detecting and uh, resolving uh, issues before they become critical. So yeah, I guess I talk too much. Basically we have the four things that we said and I guess in terms of system design interview you only need to know the, the things that i have said and also what i'm said i said right now i will put it in the comment section anyway so you make sure that uh like that it, you, you can see anyway so basically it's a pretty straightforward we have um where's the shape and let's put this one and i want to be uh, thick and just like that and like that, and like that, and maybe have a fourth, and Okay, so let's just say that we had uh, 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 l logging and uh, monitor uh, uh, monitoring I guess like uh, uh, monitoring and uh, uh, automation. automation and last who has the uh, 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 matrixes and uh, pop, 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 pop. Just copy and paste. Okay, and just have it like that, and uh, create. Uh, and yeah, that's it for for our system right now. I guess we had. The last uh, uh, episode will be tomorrow. We will talk about how uh, the database is scaling because our application right now is getting the, uh, tons of millions of data and how we can scaling. Maybe we'll talk about trading, vertical scaling, horizontal scaling. And uh, and yeah, I guess this will be the last episode into our fundamentals. And after that, we'll start to design real, uh, 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 real uh, systems. We could, uh, and uh, and yeah, and yeah, that's it. That's it, that's it for, for today's video. If you like this, uh, this video make sure to sum uh, to subscribe to the channel give me a thumbs up and turn on the notification bell so you will never miss a video and yeah see you soon